Okay, everybody. So, in this video, I wanted to talk about uh, a continuation of what I've already showed you, but talk specifically about different ways uh, to set up the interval. Because, as I've showed you the problems and I've set up the integrals a, a certain way, if you ask around or if you read books or watch other videos or talk to other people, you might find um, variations on this. It might not look the same. And I just wanted to show you that there are different ways to set these up and it probably doesn't matter how you do it as long as you're right, okay? And by that, of course, that might sound obvious that you have to be right, but that all your measurements when you impose the y-axis have to be consistent and correct with respect to each other and with respect to the situation that you're given. So here's a problem that I did in another video. Uh, we wanted to find the fluid force on just one side of this plate that was submerged in water. Um, and it was submerged vertically and it was flat and uh, all that. Okay, and I gave you the dimensions and told you how deep it was. And uh, we were going to use the water density as 9,800 newtons per cubic meter and so on. So... I, in the other video where I worked this, I, I took this and I imposed the y-axis on it like that. I put the water level here at 5, and I put the trapezoidal plate down here with its bottom side on the x-axis. So here's the x-axis, like so. And that's how I decided to do it. And I got the depth and the width like that, okay? But there are other ways that you could have done it, all right? I can take this same geometric object, the same plate, and impose the y-axis on it in a totally different way. Uh, but as long as all my measurements and formulas are correct, it's not going to matter, okay? So think again about this. There's the water level. The plate is four meters below it, but the plate itself is a top width of four meters, a bottom of seven meters, and a height of one meter. I could have put the y-axis on that like this. Oh, will this setup also work? Hint, yes, it will. But um, I could have done it like this. So I could have put the water level on the x-axis, okay? And that would put the plate, you know, down on the part of the, you know, the negative y-axis, where all the y-coordinates are negative. Nonetheless, suppose I did that, okay? Uh, given that it's four meters below the water level, then that would put this top y coordinate at negative four. Okay, that does put a, a gap here of four, so that's consistent. But then the width along the top was four and the width along the bottom was seven. So if I put the y axis right through the middle, uh, that makes this x coordinate two and this one will be at negative two. And that makes this one at 3.5 and this one would be at negative 3.5. Also, it was given that the height of this shape was one and so if the y coordinate here was negative four that means down at either this point or this point it'll be negative five okay all right so i can do that everything is consistent uh with the picture that i was given everything like every point and number on this sketch with the y-axis imposed on it is consistent with the plate being this shape and size and being four meters beneath the water. Okay, totally consistent. Uh, well, now let's approach it like the problems in the other videos. Um, to get the width of this thing, I need to find the equation of a line that goes through those two points. You can agree with me that those points are on there because of the dimensions and because of where I put this with respect to the x-axis. Okay, and so you use what you learn in algebra, you find the equation of a line that goes through the point 2 and negative 4, and 3.5 and negative 5. That turns out to be y is negative 2 thirds x minus 8 thirds, okay? Solving it for x will give me what I need for the width of this thing. And so I solve it for x, I'll get negative 4 minus 3 over 2y, okay? So the width as a function of y is going to be double this, okay? Um, all right, and so I get negative 8 minus 3y, and then the depth is going to be negative y. You know, the depth at, like, this point 
you know how far it is under the water? It's going to be the opposite of the y coordinate. That's consistent with the way that I've done things before, actually. I mean, in every other problem, you know, take the water level, wherever it is. Say you put it at 5. Okay, so put it at 5. Then the depth at any point along the y-axis is 5 minus the y-coordinate. So, so you could say that when I did this before, that the depth was the water level minus y. So if in this case I put the water at, what's the y-coordinate on the x-axis? 0, okay, 0 minus y, which is just negative y, which, I mean, of course that would work. Uh, what's the y-coordinate at that spot? Negative 4. What's the opposite of 4? Or what's the opposite of negative 4? 4. 4 is the depth, right? 4 is the depth right there. Okay, so there's my width and depth. Here's my integral, okay? The object now spans the y-axis from negative 5 to negative 4, and so those are the bounds of the integral. And you get uh, 245,000 newtons for that integral, just like you would have gotten doing it the way I already showed you in the video. Okay, so you've got some flexibility for the setup. I mean, just notice how different this was. Uh, everything was in a totally different place, but I was still consistent and correct about all the measurements that were given to me originally. I gave a correct formula for the line and solved it for x and knew that I should double it to get the width. Like, all that's correct and consistent. So, of course, I got the same answer.